In this video, I'm going to break down a four-step formula you can use to guarantee that you get a return offer from any software engineering internship. If you follow this equation, you will land in that full-time job you've been dreaming about. My name is Amon. I'm a former software engineer and current career coach. In college, I landed six high paying software engineering internships. And the day I graduated college, I started at a six figure software engineering full-time job. On this channel, I help you land your dream job in tech. Now of those six internships, I got return offers from Amazon, John Deere, and Shopify. So I'm very familiar with the return offer process. Now, imagine it's the late 1870s. The world is on the brink of an electrical revolution, but one man stands in his dimly lit laboratory, surrounded by the remnants of failed experiments. His name is Thomas Edison. For months, Edison has been working to create a long-lasting and practical electric light bulb. He's tested over a thousand materials for his filament, each time tweaking his design and seeking feedback from each failure. Yet Edison's persistence never wavers. He famously declares, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. This concept is called Edisonian iteration, and the fundamental idea behind it is to try something, get feedback, adjust, and repeat. And you must practice Edisonian iteration if you want to get a return offer from your internship this summer. First of all, we need to break down what feedback even is. So when you start a new role at any company, chances are the people around you are thinking certain thoughts about you. They might notice you push some bad code or sit a certain way in your desk. And usually they have certain thoughts that pop into their head when they make those observations. Now, crucially, you don't have access to those thoughts. Again, people are constantly looking at you thinking random thoughts that sure, maybe they forget a day later, but you really can't access those thoughts, or can you? See, the process of collecting feedback is systematically going to everybody at your company or environment and asking them to tell you what those thoughts are. And this is terrifying because when you're asking for feedback, you're opening up the door to get negative feedback. And that's something that nobody likes to hear. And chances are you are really not on the level of the other engineers there. They've probably been there for years. They know tons of things about the company that you just don't. And you're also way earlier in your career than they are as well. So there's a 99% chance you are probably doing something wrong. And by asking them, they're going to tell you what you're doing wrong, which is why the majority of people never ask for feedback. But here's the thing. If you can swallow your ego, walk up to your manager, walk up to your mentor and ask them to tell you what you're doing wrong and how you can improve. Now you know what to do. And that's the power of asking for feedback. See, you could go your entire internship just trying stuff and then seeing if you get the return offer or not. But that is literally one cycle of feedback. Do you really want to risk your return offer because you're too worried to ask someone else what they think of you? Instead of waiting your entire internship and just asking them at the end whether you got the return offer or not. Instead, you should be constantly asking your manager and mentor, how am I doing? Am I on track to receive the return offer? Is there any way I can improve my performance at this company? And trust me, they are noticing things you're doing wrong or right. And just by asking them, they're happy to tell you how to improve. Now, most internships do have monthly check-ins or a mid-internship check-in. So those systems are built in to give you some level of feedback, but that's still way too infrequent. Ideally, you want to be asking at least once a week, if not more than that. Now, another angle of this is the fact that the guy walking into your internship on day one that person is most likely not ready for a return offer. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. You are probably not capable of getting a return offer. You don't have the skills. You don't have the experience. You are not qualified to work full time at this company. Not at all. And this is why so many people, including me, I made this exact same mistake, waste the first half of their software engineering internship coming into the office, chilling, not really being focused, enjoying the new environment that you're in. And then at your midpoint evaluation, your manager tells you you are not on track for a return offer, and then you have to spend weeks catching up. Again, I did this. During my first half of my Amazon internship, I showed up, moved into the LA office. I was doing the work, enjoying myself, learning, creating value. But my product manager was on paternity leave, so I never once asked him for feedback on how I was doing. And pretty soon the midpoint evaluation rolls out, the product manager gets on a call with me and tells me that everything I was doing was wrong. I had to completely redo my project and all because I never sought out feedback from people at the company. As a simple habit, aim to ask three times a week for feedback. It could be from your manager, your mentor, the product manager, stakeholders, anyone involved in your return offer process, make sure to have three asks per week. And then crucially, you need to actually take action on their feedback and advice. I'm going to link a Notion template down below at amalmanazar.com slash Notion. I'm showing it on screen right now. This is something that you could run through once a week that will ensure that you actually get feedback from three people and you reflect on last week to make sure you actually implemented the feedback that they gave before. Now, another great way to do this is asking your manager to set up a 15 minute weekly check-in and that gives you the room to ask them for direct advice and feedback. Now, 
a lot of managers don't have the time to meet with an intern every single week, which is why you can just do it asynchronously, do it via Slack as well. Now, principle number two to magically turn an internship into a return offer is to be a career cartographer. Before venturing into uncharted territory, a cartographer starts with an educated guess, a preliminary sketch formed by satellite images, historical maps, and existing data. This rough draft outlines major features like rivers, mountains, and potential landmarks. It's a hypothesis on paper serving as a guide for the cartographer's upcoming journey. As they traverse the landscape, measuring and observing the initial sketch evolves, with each step taken in the field or finding it, and transforming it into an accurate and detailed map. This blend of intuition and exploration captures the essence of cartography, starting with an idea and fleshing it out through first-hand experience. And you need to treat your internship exactly like this. On week one, you want to sit down with your mentor and manager and map out exactly what your internship is going to look like, week by week by week. And even before that, you must make it known that your number one intention is to get a return offer. You can literally just say to your manager, I'm really excited to do my best during this internship and contribute to the company as much as possible. And one of my major goals is to achieve a return offer and come back here to work full time. What can we do to plan this out and make it happen together? Then you sit there with your manager and chart out the 10 to 12 weeks exactly what you must have done week by week by week. And crucially, you agree with your manager. If you're able to achieve all of that over the 12 weeks, you've pretty much secured a return offer. And you say this on week one. The fact that you've written out a document on week one with 10 to 12 deliverables, a timeline you have to stick to, and a verbal confirmation that that will turn into a return offer, it's a magical thing. Because no one can argue with that. If you write a series of goals, 10 to 12 goals, and you hit all of them on time, there is no way the manager can deny you that return offer. Or at least, you drastically improve the chances of getting the return offer. Now, this was another mistake I made at Amazon. I never charted out any goals. My manager gave me my project, left me on my own for a month and a half. Sure, I was working on it, making some progress. But like I said earlier, I was doing pretty much the wrong thing. And she didn't have any transparency as to whether I was hitting any kind of weekly goals or anything like that. And even though I finished my project by the end of the internship successfully, on time, I was only given a return internship offer, not a return full-time offer. And a big reason that was the case was because I didn't chart a week-by-week-by-week -by -week -by -week goal setup. Now, luckily, during my Shopify internship, I was able to fix this mistake. I had a weekly check-in with my manager, we chartered out weekly goals, I ended up hitting the majority of the goals, and I got that return offer. Now, the thing is that the majority of people are not going to actually hit every single one of your 12 or 10 goals. It's pretty unrealistic to actually hit all of your goals, because you you haven't even entered the territory yet. This is like expecting a cartographer to perfectly map out a territory that they've simply never seen before. But the fact that you have a direction, you have things to aim for, will really improve your progress during your internship. It's completely fine that those goals will change, those goals will adapt, as new information comes to light, but at least you have something to aim for. As President Eisenhower famously said, plans are worthless, but planning is everything. Yes, the plans will change, but now at least you know what to hit. The third aspect of guaranteeing that you're going to land a return offer this summer is to do what is necessary. More specifically, you must accept that a 40-hour work week in the context of an internship is a pure myth, and nothing more than a myth. Let's take a step back here. Are you doing the internship for the salary or the return offer? Pause this video and answer that question right now. Is the purpose of the internship to get paid 30 or 40 bucks an hour, which is pretty great overall, right? Or is the point that the internship is a trial run, effectively a test period for the company to see if you're worth your salt before they hire you full-time indefinitely from that point on? Most of you guys are thinking, yeah, the point of the internship is to get the return offer, not really just to get that salary for the summer. Again, the salary is nice, the salary is important, but the salary is secondary to the fact that you want to come back full-time. And because the salary is secondary and the return offer is king, that means that you must do what is necessary to get the return offer. And honestly, if that means working 60, 70 hours a week during your summer, so be it. If you want to guarantee the return offer, you must get comfortable with working on the weekends. Now I'm going to caveat this. If you are completely in line with your goals on week one, you're hitting every single goal on time, then you might not have to work on the weekends and you might be able to chill on your Saturdays and Sundays, take your evenings off, which is great. I hope that's the case for you. And I would love it if that was the case for me. But more often than not, people are unrealistic with their goals. They fall behind and they have to play catch up. And unfortunately, that's going to eat into your Saturdays, Sundays and evening. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Amon, won't you get burned out? But Amon, isn't your mental health going to go to shit? But Amon, how am I supposed to keep up my healthy habits like going to the gym, 
socializing, sleeping. And I see what you mean. All of these things are incredibly important to your general well-being. And I do prioritize all of them. I strongly believe in socialization. I believe in sleep. I believe in physical and mental health. But at the end of the day, you have one goal and it's to get the return offer. And the way you get your return offer is to set some goals and actually deliver on them, to actually finish your project on time. So unfortunately, you might have to set aside some of those healthy habits just to achieve your goal. And the key is, it's not forever, it's just for the summer. You have 10 weeks at this company to come in, actually make an impact. So why would you squander that? By wanting to prioritize things like socialization, seeing the new place you're in. It's simply not worth the risk. Every student I've talked to who's got a return offer from a company like Amazon, Shopify, the majority of them just simply hit their goals and they just give it a return offer. That's pretty much it. Hit the goals, get the return offer. So if that's all it takes, then I wouldn't be afraid of working on the weekend and evenings to actually achieve that goal. At a minimum, you should be working eight to 10 hours a day during the weekdays, and then probably four hours on Saturday and four hours on Sunday. That is a good routine I would get used to. And you still have time for friends and family. Working from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, that leaves the morning and the evenings open for anything you want to do. Now, when it comes to crunch time in the second half of your internship, you might have to increase that. You might have to work all day Saturday and maybe all day Sunday. Now, one tip here is I would not sacrifice sleep. Something you're probably tempted to do is, hey, I'll just sleep six hours, five hours a night, grind 12, 14 hour days, and that'll get the return offer. But if you choose to do that, then your quality of output seriously goes down. See, I've noticed that working four hours on a Saturday and four hours on a Sunday, especially during the day, it doesn't really make too much of an impact to my overall physical and mental health. But if I started to pull all nighters, stay up late working, not get enough sleep, that would actually impact things. So if I were you, I would prioritize sleep but just take some of the day on the weekends and contribute that to your internship. Now, something else that really impacted my career progress overall was reading nonfiction books. Reading has made a massive difference to my overall self and career development. Books like Outlive by Peter Atia, So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport, Atomic Habits by James Clear, The 4-Hour Workweek. They open up your mind to possibilities that you had no idea existed before. And the reading habit is something that literally every single successful person does. They all read consistently. One book that massively changed my life is called Million Dollar Weekend by Noah Kagan, the surprisingly simple way to launch a seven-figure business in 48 hours. Now, this book is the definitive guide to starting a company in 2024. It's what I use to learn how to launch my own startup, and it's something I recommend everybody read if they've ever had an inkling of entrepreneurship in their blood. Now, Noah Kagan is a serial entrepreneur and investor. He's worth about 30 to $40 million today. He was early at Facebook, early at Mint, and now he's the CEO of AppSumo, the sponsor of today's video. Some of the most important lessons in Million Dollar Weekend are the power of asking which is really in line with the power of asking for feedback, something that directly contributes to you getting a return offer. See, when you ask someone for something, the worst that they can say is no, and very often not asking them at all is just equivalent to the worst case anyway. So you might as well ask them. Another lesson Noah Kagan teaches is the importance of starting before you're ready, something I also believe in. When you go for a software engineering internship, so many students waste months and months of time because they feel like they're not ready to apply for internships, which is why if you've had the goal of starting a company, going for internships, landing a job as a software engineer, today's the day you need to start. Now, if you do end up starting a company, AppSumo, today's sponsor, is the best marketplace online to buy apps and tools that will help you run your business. See, the special part about AppSumo is that every single app on there is just a one-time fixed price. I hate the fact that nowadays, every single app or tool seems to be a subscription software. You're paying $50, $100, $200 a month for some of these apps. I pay for them. It's ridiculous. And the beauty of AppSumo is that once you buy it, you own it for life. You don't pay anything else. Now you can get Million Dollar Weekend on Amazon for $18, or you can get it on AppSumo, it's exactly the same book, for only $7, the cost of a latte. Imagine having the knowledge to start a million dollar company for the cost of a Starbucks drink. So once you start your company, check out the link in the description to get Million Dollar Weekend, and also any tools you need to run your business. Thank you to AppSumo for sponsoring today's video. Now, another aspect of this is I would recommend taking some of your internship salary and using it to outsource household tasks to give you time back. Something I strongly believe in is the power of outsourcing routine household tasks that frankly are far below your hourly salary. Activities like cooking, cleaning, and doing laundry, all of that is worth probably $12 to $15 an hour max. And the lowest paid software engineering intern is paid at least $15 an hour already. And most people have to spend about 10 hours a week in total at least doing all of that, whether it's cooking, cleaning up afterwards, cleaning your toilet, doing your laundry. That's about 10 hours a week of effort. So something I would do is I would spend maybe $500 to $1,000 a month just outsourcing all of that. Consistent laundry can be done at around $100 a month. Cleaning is roughly $300 a month. And meal prep is maybe five to $600 a month. In sum total, with $800 to $1,000 a month, you can buy back 40 hours of time a month. 
Think about that. You are buying back an extra week of work time per month. That is unbelievably powerful. And that is one thing I've used to get ahead consistently. Again, I know what you're thinking. Aman, I love cleaning. I love cooking. I love doing my laundry. But let me ask you, if you had the option of making your apartment dirty and then cleaning it when it's already clean or doing some other activity like reading a book, going on a hike, spending time with friends and family, you would not make your apartment dirty and clean it again because it's not the highest value thing you can do. You're just in the habit of cleaning. So you think that it's something that's essential to your daily routine. Trust me, it's not. You can outsource it really easily and you'll get probably at least an hour a day of time back from that. Another thing I hear from people is that they just say that, oh, if I get someone to clean my place, I'm just going to sit on my phone for an hour extra per day, which fair enough. If you get an hour of time per day extra and you just sit on your phone for an hour per day extra, then you're probably going to lose anyway. So I don't really know what I should say to you at that point. <laughs> just remember, your goal is to get the return offer. Your time is valuable. So spend money to buy your time back. Tools like Notion have really impacted my overall productivity, which is why I tend to talk about them a lot. Some other apps I really enjoy are Fantastic Hal, a really great calendar app. Things 3, one of my favorite to-do list apps in the world. And AppSumo even has tons of apps that just help you improve your productivity in general. So one app on AppSumo is called TidyCal. It effectively allows you to send booking links to people. So when you're scheduling coffee chats and meetings at your company, no longer do you need to do this back and forth dance about, oh, what time are you free? No, I'm free on this other day. You can just send a booking link. They just select the time that works best for them. It's a game changer. And another app that's really great is called SendFox. It's a really great newsletter app. Something I recommend, and both Ali Abdal and Noah Kagan also recommend, is that anybody who wants to get into content creation, start by creating a newsletter. You own your audience, no platform can take you down, and it's also a much lower lift to write an article every week rather than posting a YouTube video or creating TikTok content. And SendFox is a great way to do that for one fixed price. Okay, now the fourth step of the formula to guarantee you get a return offer is to keep a paper trail. See, at this point, you're asking for feedback consistently, you're doing whatever it takes to consistently hit your goals. Now you need to make sure that people actually know about the progress you're making. And this was the final mistake I made at Amazon. I didn't verify that my mentor and manager knew what I was up to. Again, I was working hard. I was probably working at least 40 or 50 hours a week, even in the first half of the internship. I was making good progress. I was pushing code. Yet, I just never got in contact with my manager. I effectively didn't talk to her for over a month. And because of my mistake there, she was under the impression that I just really didn't do anything at all. I literally finished my project by the end of the internship, but it just wasn't enough to get the full-time return offer rather than the internship return offer. And again, an internship return offer was pretty good. It was not like I crashed and burned and failed that internship, but I didn't get the 100% goal I wanted to go for. Now, the principle I was missing here is called the principle of over-communication. And in the context of software engineering, over-communication refers to the deliberate sharing of feedback, information, and updates amongst team members and stakeholders. Effectively, you are regularly sharing your progress with everybody who's involved with your return offer decision. And the goal there is to use the availability bias. Psychologically speaking, if your manager can just see that you're doing tons of stuff, they're getting notifications all the time and you're pushing code, they're getting Slack messages all day long, with you messaging how much you've done every single day. Subconsciously, they're going to think that you're doing a good job compared to if you did the exact same thing, but you just never told anyone. It is your responsibility to over-communicate to your mentor and manager and make sure everybody is well aware of everything you've achieved in the company. The best way to do this is to, on day one, create a Slack channel with your mentor, manager, product manager, stakeholders, anyone who's involved with the return offer decision, and then send a daily update in there with everything you're planning on doing, everything you got done, maybe even a few times a week, you message about how your goals are going and at a minimum at the end of the week on a Friday, indicate that you've actually completed your goal for that week. And they don't even need to respond to the Slack messages, but just the fact that they're getting notifications, they're looking at those messages, seeing that you're contributing and doing good work, that subconsciously increases your return offer chance by maybe at least 10 to 20%. And the final process you can use to make sure that people know what you're doing over your internship is to keep a brag sheet. Basically, every time you check off a goal, check the goal off, but then also write down things you did to achieve the goal, achievements you made during that week, and just make sure you have a sheet of basically everything you've done over your internship. Because when your manager decides to give you the return offer at the end, they're probably going to do a final performance review. And if you bring this arsenal of information, you show it to them, you're like, Hey manager, this is everything I've done during my internship. Again, it just really improves the chances of you actually getting that return offer you're going for. Now, one caveat here is do not bullshit any of this. So don't make up stuff you didn't do. Don't try to find things that you did do that don't really mean anything and try to sell it as something you did do. I know the temptation is there, but as a manager of a company myself, it's very easy to tell when someone is completely making something up or bullshitting some work that they thought they did, but it's just really not valuable. So only put down work that you are genuinely doing and you genuinely think is useful. By the way, if you're struggling to land a high paying software engineering internship and 
for the life of you cannot figure out how to break into Fang, click the second link in the description. I actually run a school for computer science students called the Software Engineering Accelerator. It's my only product, and essentially I just get you a software engineering internship. It's pay on results. Every single student who joins just magically gets a software engineering internship through the program, and it's absolutely guaranteed, which is something I haven't seen from any other course or program. So if you're interested in me literally getting an internship for you, be sure to click the link in the description. If you're interested in improving your resume or getting better at LeetCode, there's some videos on screen for you to watch. But other than that, best of luck in your internship, and I will see you in the next video.